Hello everyone, welcome to Organ Analysis. So this is our concept through problem solving part. Now in this video we are going to learning about uh, sharpless asymmetric epoxidation. Okay, and in this video we are just uh, going to learning only the concepts, mechanism, and the reagents or the things which is used for this reaction. Okay, and in the next video we will going to this we will discuss on the different types of questions, problems, or ex examples, and also the previous year question per questions. Okay, so let's start our surplus asymmetric epoxidation. Now see wh what type of compound generally uh, generally form this uh, type of epoxidation. Now for this this type of epoxidation generally uh, generally uh, form in the allylic alcohol. Okay, so in case of allylic alcohol, you have to selective uh, you have to you have you can select the uh, position of the epoxidation will take place either is in either it is up phase or it is down phase. It you can be predicted by using this sharpless asymmetric epoxidation by changing the ligand. Okay, so now first you have to know the things which is used. That is the catalyst. Now which type of catalyst are generally used for this uh, sharpless asymmetric epoxidation is the titanium complex. Okay, so the catalyst which is used is titanium isopropyl group IPR of 4 4 4 okay titanium O IPR isopr isopropyl group whole 4 this is your catalyst now the second important thing comes out that is the chiral ligand now what is the chiral ligand the chiral ligand which is used for this reaction two types of chiral ligands are generally used that is date okay so I am written over here that is L plus date or D minus date. Now question comes that what is date? Now date is nothing but dithyl tartrate. Okay. So date is equals to dithyl tartrate. I will show you all the uh, structures of this dithyl tartrate. Okay. Dithyl tartrate. Okay. Now I will show you all the what is plus or minus. Now see what is dithyl tartrate. Now the tartrate we all know the tart uh, formula of tartaric acid. Now the, this tartaric acid hydrogens these two uh, there is hydrogen and here is a hydrogen. These hydrogens are the ester form of this uh, tartaric acid. That is here is your AT. Here is your AT. Okay. Now this is your hydrogen. Your OH. This is your OH and your hydrogen. Okay, so now this is your uh, L now plus DET that is dithyl tartrate. Now, why I'm saying it's uh, plus, I uh, sorry, it, it's uh, L configuration. You, you can easily understand by using the position of this OH group. If the OH group is present in the left side, it is called the L, and if the OH group present in the right side, and you, you can call it uh, plus D uh, date that D minus date. Okay, I will show you here. This is your L plus date, and now if the double bond, this is a double bond, not double bond actually. This is your OH. Here is your OH. Now this is your OH. Here is your H. Now okay, so this is your two optically active. Uh, uh, now these two are uh, not optically active uh, just because these two are L D minus D T. Okay, so this is your D minus D T. That is dihydrate right minus dihydrate right tartrate. Right. Okay, so now uh, for this, this is your uh, this is very much important for your chiral ligand. Okay, so this uh, it it generally controls the chirality of this whole reaction mechanism. Okay, now this now one more important thing is that the L plus is your natural, and this is your unnatural. Now why it is unnatural? <coughs> it is natural just because of mm, this. Uh, we all know that all acids are generally in L form, so that is why it's natural. The L L uh, ester form of this uh, tartaric acid in L form is natural, but this D it is in D form, so that is why it is unnatural. Okay. Now the configuration of the both center is in case of unnatural unnatural uh, D minus state. The configuration of its Ss. The Ss means this center actually. These two centers. And this is your R. Both are in R configuration. Okay. Now let's come to the point uh, that there is your catalyst, chiral ligand. Now the one more important thing comes out that is your oxidant. Now we have to put the oxidizing agent. Now the oxidant which is used for this tri uh, tart butyl hydroperoxide. That is tart butyl hydro. Peroxide, okay. That is 
TBU OH okay this is your this is your oxidant okay now next comes uh, things comes out uh, that is how the reaction proceed and uh, how their all mechanism takes place now for this uh, this uh, Sharpless uh, scientist named called Carl Berry Sharp Sharpless and he got the Nobel Prize in 2001 for the stereoselective oxidation reaction okay so in case in 2001 he got the Nobel Prize for the stereoselective oxidation reaction okay now this for your information now next question comes then how the mechanism proceed now see uh, the first I have to, I have taken first the compound uh, that is titanium see your titanium OIPR it is your isopropyl IPR IPR okay now one more thing that I have to clear to you is that the generally it, it believes that the generally uh, this type of sharply asymmetric oxidation follows a dimeric complex okay but I will show I will show you here in the situ in a simplified way for the that you can easily understand so that is why I am taking the a single uh, single isomer okay not the dimer form of this one. I also show you the dimer form uh, in the last uh, in the last of this video but we, we, to generalize this uh, water surplus asymmetric epoxidation I will uh, I will show you in the uh, this monomer formation okay so the first thing which is used that is in this is your titanium isopropyl this is your catalyst now in in the medium that you have to add is dead that is the first that we used that is D minus state okay d minus state now see how the reaction uh, proceed now this is this type of compound generally two isopropyl groups uh, these two isopropyl groups are generally leave from the system and this date will directly attack to this center that is two these two these two OH group generally attached to this titanium center now so I will show you how this reaction proceed two moles or two isopropanol will leave from the system and it generally forms the OIPR OIPR okay now this is your this two isopropyl group will leave and this will generally follows say double bond o OAT and this is your C double OAT okay so now this is directly coordinated with this titanium center okay by the lone pair of this oxygen now see next the things which you, you you have to put in the reaction mechanism I'll show you here that is your uh, oxidant which is used TBU OH okay that is start butyl hydroperoxide now then one mole of next the one mole of one uh, isopropanol will leave from the system and this will directly attack over here and this will leave from the system now we can get the fine you can get the product uh, like this this is your OIPR and CO2 AT now see how the this part will attach to the center this oxygen and uh, this is your tertiary butyl group okay so this also coordinated with this center so now this titanium isopropon uh, isopropoxide this part is generally in plus 4 oxidation this this titanium center is plus 4 now this is generally the plus 6 oxidation state of this titanium okay now the important uh, thing that also mentioned over here that this type of generally surplus asymmetric epoxidation generally takes place in in allylic alcohol only in allylic alcohol okay so this is very much selective so that is this makes this reaction stereoselective and as well as regioselective okay regioselective now see this isopropanol this allylic alcohol is used in this uh, reaction medium so that is why this type of I will take a compound like this type of allylic alcohol is generally used and this I, one mole of isopropanol is present in your medium and it will also leave from the system just because this oxygen will not directly attack to this titanium center and this will leave correspondingly from the system now you get the product that is your oxygen 
this is your double bond uh, now this is your titanium this is your titanium this is your tertiary butyl group this is the part now see this is your oxygen okay sorry so this double bond this is your OAT this is your CO2 AT okay so it is coordinated with this center now this now this there is an important thing that is the epoxidation will take place now in this in in this step now see how that epoxidation will take place now this oxygen has a lone pair of electron it will go over here and this double bond will take and this bonds go over here okay now this directly attached to the center now see how the epoxide will generally express so this is your cyclic type of process i will show you that's why i am show you in a cyclic way okay so this is your titanium center this is your oh this is your oxygen double bond go see your co2 t okay now see this is your oxygen see this as one ch2 is over here this bond now this is your upside upsided okay so this is your upsided double bond that is your half of the plane now this double bond uh, this oxygen will take place in the upside so that is why this double bond this epoxy will epoxide will form uh, in the generally from this up upsided uh, uh, epoxide formation okay so and there another part the part that we have rest part is this tertiary butyl group okay now the important part in the, or the important step that is your uh, next part i will show you here okay so this is your titanium the oxygen this is your oxygen this is your co2 at this is your o at now this allyl this uh, ox this uh, epoxide will leave from the system and this tertiary uh, then one mole of isopropanol you have in the present in the medium the isopropanol is present in your medium and this will directly attack to the center and this will leave from the system now ultimately the product that you get is this one this is your titanium and this is your uh, tertiary butyl group okay now this is your product now after the final step that is from this to this one you get the ultimate product like this and the things that you remove from the system this is your tertiary butyl and your OH and one mole of isopropanol is uh, used for this reaction to form this type of uh, previous compound that you that you have started from here okay so ultimately you get this type of product now this is your when you use this uh, uh, this minus state you get the a minus state you, you get this type of upsided product if we use this uh, plus state of that is the natural way of the L plus state then you get the uh, the, the back sided product that, that is you, you get this type of product this is your OH and you get the final product like this okay so this is your overall all mechanism now one more thing the one more reagent you, you, if you follow any standard book like adverts or sweep lens you can see one more important more reagents like used for this reaction that is molecular shapes okay i will show you here that is molecular shapes molecular shapes uh, that is used in, in case of that is generally used is four angstrom molecular shift now why this molecular shift is used and uh, this generally used for this uh, reaction to absorb water or to improving the yield okay the use for this molecular shift is absorbing water uh, to improving improving the yield of the reaction okay so why this uh, why this type of field uh, molecular shapes use just because of if the water present water is uh, water is all you all know the water is present in the reaction medium so this water destroys the catalyst that we use this titanium catalyst it can be destroyed or the, this epoxide ring may open up so that is why so for this two problem that is i'm written over here this is two problem so this two problem to, uh, uh, to avoid this type of problem so this type of molecular shapes are used that is water can destroy the concept uh, sorry the catalyst uh, or another next problem is that to ring rings may opens 
of repoxide okay so these two are the problems so these two are problems so to avoid this problem these molecular shapes are generally used okay now uh, the last important thing is to identify this compound if I if I show you a uh, plane like this so if you have the double bond like this is your R1 and this is your R2 this is your R3 this is your R4 so this is your allylic alcohol I already said that this allylic alcohol is stereoselectively uh, epoxidized so this type of allylic alcohol if you if the lower right in case of lower right this allyl this CH2OH is present in the lower right so CH2OH is present in lower right then the ox if we use L plus debt L plus debt and uh, okay one more thing is that the in case of uh, in case of debt we, we also use DIPT so this is all sorry this is DIPT so okay so this can be used uh, by uh, by using uh, by not using this uh, debt okay so this also can be used now if we use L plus debt then epoxidation takes place this is your oxidation epoxidation this epoxidation takes place in in the lower side and if we use the L D minus debt then the epoxidation takes place in the upper side okay I will show you all the concept all the examples in the next video so uh, I hope this video is very much helpful and I think I covered all the topics regarding this uh, all the mechanism for this uh, symmetric epoxidation okay one more thing is that the dimeric Com dimeric formation of this complex now see how the dimeric form is generally used that is so this is quite complicated so I will show you in generalized way to simplify you that you can easily understand okay that is CO280 uh, this titanium okay so this is your double bond O this is your O80 now this as I bonded with isopropanol now this for oxygen this uh, this oxygen is bonded with the titanium center this is your oxygen okay so this is quite difficult uh, to understand but I will show you in short way this is correctly with this this will bonded with the center and here, here you have the isopropyl group and this is your have the isopropyl group and here you have the isopropyl group okay so and one more isopropyl is that here that is co 20 okay so this is the overall dimeric uh, dimeric formation of this so generally believe that this type of dimeric complex are generally used for this uh, sharpless asymmetric epoxidation okay so this is all about the sharpless asymmetric epoxidation and this is very much stereoselective and regioselective as well now I will show you the whole example mechanism and previous uh, examples and uh, previous year problems. I will show you in the next video. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope this video is very much helpful for you. Uh, if you find this video useful, you, sh you can please share it with your friends and please do subscribe my channel. Okay, so, and that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.